I ended up breaking up this video into two parts over two days uh, just to make it easier for the length. I did also want to mention that if you're doing a killer dowel pin repair, it's probably a good idea to go look at the block and get the serial number off of the block of your engine and call Cummins. And you can ask them to look up on their database and take a look at your serial number and see if your particular engine has already been repaired under their recall policy. Because a previous owner, if you purchased it used, may have already done this under the recall and it'd be right there in their records and that may save you a lot of work a lot of effort to go in just to discover that somebody else has already done this repair so that's my uh, little tip I did call and they didn't have any record of this and as you saw in the last episode which I'll link above uh, the repair had not been done so it was definitely needed in my instance Hope you enjoy the rest of this video, and again, many, many thanks to Badge. Recommend you check out his channel for tips and tricks. It's day number two. Yesterday we started the project at exactly noon, and we stopped at exactly two o'clock. Made a quick trip into Blythe to get a water pump. Came back, installed that. So we had two hours plus 10 or 12 minutes or so to put in the water pump. And during that two hour from 12 to two, Badge took a quick break to go change his shirt because he had uh, spilled something on it. So I would subtract about eight minutes for that. So I would say two hours yesterday, and today we're back at it. I think we're gonna complete this in under three hours. Basically all we have left to do at this point is to put the radiator back inside and put the belts and the pulleys back on. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a trick. You see this pulley down here? These bolts are really soft. And if you put an impact on them like I did, you can round them off. So you got to be very careful. And um, a lot of people like Loctite these. If you put red Loctite on them, you're going to end up stripping the bolt. So we don't put Loctite on them, but I put these lines. So what you do is go end up with a mirror and you keep checking every once in a while. Just make sure they haven't backed off. Because if you put them in with Loctite, you'll never get them out. I'm just saying. So that's a little tricky. You see, we got a new water pump, and that's just like a Dodge. We've marked the cover here. Now these ones here, they, you don't want to put these in with the impact because they only go about 20 some pounds, right? You check the torque, I think it's 22 or 24 pounds. They don't want you tightening them too much. A little bit of silicone just to keep the gasket in line, and uh, you're good to go. So we'll put this all back together now and we'll be done. Now we got this back into place here and we're not going to tighten it down because we got to put the fan on. You can't pull this out without taking the fan off. Now you're going to wonder when we put this together you're going to see pictures how we do it. Always line your bolts up on your fan so that they're up like 12 o'clock so that um, you can line them up like 12, 3, 6 and 9 right? And then that way you know where the bolts are and you can put the fan in you don't have to really fumble with it. And the other thing is when you get the rad out, you look through here and see if there's any bugs between the rad and there to air. And while you're doing all this, right? And make sure all your bolts are tight and then it's good. But I just, and this is just sitting in the bolts, right? Don't worry about it, it won't damage it. And then put your fan on, we'll push it forward or to the rear and put the struts on it. That's the easiest way to get the fan off. That's why a lot of people will pull the front out and that's why they tell you 12 hours because they pull the shroud off and all that and it only takes 20 minutes to pull the rad. <laughs> out with the rad and then you got the thing wide open. You don't have to struggle and you know how much I hate struggling. My very careful thing is don't let the fan hit the rad. It'll leave a mark, believe me. So when you put all this stuff together, you put it together finger tight. You don't put it with a wrench or you're not like that. You always do it finger tight and that way you don't strip any bolts. If you use a gun or an impact or something, you can strip a bolt. So you always do it with finger tight make sure it's all together and then start tightening it all up and, and get all your bolts tight. Finger tight. Or start with your fingers always. Okay, so Seven brought up a good point. This is two rads in one, basically. This one here with the big connection is air to air. And I'll explain how that works. And the other one is the rad in behind it. So these are two separate things. 
totally they all it is is that you need air to go across there to air to cool it off and the rad the same thing now whenever you take air and compress it it heats up it doesn't matter what you do it compresses it so the air comes in from the air cleaner into the turbo right here goes through the turbo and comes out here to the output to the engine right now at this point right here it's heated up and it'll go up to like it'll go up a lot it'll go up like 20 30 any even 100 degrees so hot air does not burn as you know drag racing the colder the air the better so it comes out here with the tube comes into the air to air from here it gets believe it or not it gets cool because the air coming in will be like 100 degrees and it'll be like 230 270 and it'll bring the temperature down and then it comes out here on this side and goes to the intake the ideal thing is what they're trying to do is get that air as cold as they can 150 is ideal but it more like around the 200 mark right so yeah in the in, in the air cleaner into the intake of the turbo out the turbine wheel where it's compressed where and what I tell you every time you compress air it heats up so when it comes in here at say um, 80 degrees outside it'll probably come out here close to over 100 well over 100 could even be up to 200 so when it comes in here it's, we'll say 200 degrees comes through here and exits out here like 100 so it cools it down quite a bit so that's what the purpose of the air to air is so anytime you compress air you have to cool it down and that's how they do it we're getting near the end we're exactly at three hours we're putting on the last hose right now on the radiator and then it's basically done we just put this hose on here that hose there i connected this one over here myself badge let me do that i connected a hose down under there and this last big hose on top is the last one that we've got to put in. Badge has some sort of nifty tool that he calls a, a nail or something like that. A hose hose stretcher. Yep. A hose stretcher. So How like, many hours you got into this? Right out three hours. I think hours. we should go for a, for a lunch center, coffee or something. I agree. Like, we got to stretch this out to 12 hours there. That's right. Seven. I don't think we're going to do it, buddy. I'm sorry. Here's the last hose clamp right there. That's it. And we're done. So there you have it. We did the killer Dalpen repair out here in the middle of the Arizona desert. No shop, nothing. Just badge and his uh, pickup truck over here and three hours in and out. That's pretty incredible. And that included uh, changing out the water pump while we were in there. And that included a 10 minute break for badge to go down to his and rig and change out his t-shirt because he had spilled some antifreeze on it and he just wanted to get a clean shirt. So he was walking all the way over there to that tan trailer and back which was and that was like 10 minutes something like that so I would say two hours 50 minutes. All right moment of truth we're gonna start it up make sure everything runs correctly if the engine blows apart and getting it live here on uh, video. Ready badge? Ready. All right Ignition, everything's ready. Three, two, one, here we go. <laughs> Sounds good. I just hate it when everything works. And we're still at three hours to burn. Seven, what are we gonna do? I don't know, take a break. We'll fix the horn while we're waiting. This has just been such a long time coming. I've had this step in for almost two years now and been worried every day I drive this that it's just going to die because that killer Dalpin would pop out and destroy the engine. So I'm so thankful, so happy to have this fixed. Many, many thanks to Badge. Please check out his channel, putting a link below. If you're looking for tips, this man knows his stuff and he has all sorts of wonderful short videos, everything from diesel mechanics, fixing generators, uh, a lot of details on travel trailers, tips and tricks you never would have thought of. So check out his channel. Okay, so we got the engine running and we still got six hours to play. So he's saying the horn don't work. Now what I got is one of these uh, power probes. These are the greatest little toys you can find. This is a 
like this puts power right to my fingers where before you have to go in and try it and all that stuff so I got to hook the power and I push it and I got 12 volts and I put it on the horn because he says his horn don't work right so his horn does work so we know it's between here and the steering wheel so leave the horn alone so that's the good thing about this if like a light bulb a horn anything if it oh the wiper motor's gone or something like that we'll put this to the wiper motor and if you get the wiper motor to work you know it's something else it'll just save you a ton of time but anyway we'll let you know what it is i think it's this here okay give me that okay now we got a little problem here he's got a problem with his horn go ahead seven Oh, the horn works! And we're still under what? Six and a half hours. We're on a roll today. Yeah. Let's break down in here. It's all just corroded up, right? I think this box is going to have to be replaced eventually. Or yeah. taken and blown right out with, uh, with uh, dielectric grease and just blow this right out and then protect it. Because I think it's leaking down from the windows is where it's coming from. So we might have to look at that later. So what I basically did was took the relay out of there because uh, Chris's friend told him that it was a relay. So the, that's so corroded that I don't even have a power source there. So I'm just going to remove the relay, move it out front, and bring this wire back, connecting the steering wheel. Because when he goes to Texas, he has to have a horn. Done. Finished. That's all I can say. There you go. Bob's your uncle. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in the next episode.